Hey guys, welcome back. Houston Math Prep here. In this video, we're going to take a look at writing hypothesis statements for statistical hypothesis testing. Every time that we encounter a statistical hypothesis test, we need a pair of hypothesis statements. The first is called the null hypothesis, and we indicate that with H sub zero. So this little lower zero says H sub zero or H null. And this is a statement of equality always. So that statement of equality will look like parameter. Okay, we usually test two types of parameters, either a population mean mu or a population proportion P. And we're gonna say that that is equal to some value. That value will be given. But our null hypothesis is a statement of the status quo, what we believe to be true. Then we will write what we call an alternative hypothesis. That will be labeled as H sub A for alternative. And this one is usually based on the claim that you are testing. So there's three ways that this can look. We can have parameter and value, and then we can have the parameter is greater than the value. If that's the case, then we are looking at a one-sided hypothesis test to the right. And if we were going to draw ourselves a normal distribution, or in the case of a unknown standard deviation, perhaps a student T distribution, we would be looking at being up at the top of the right tail. So our rejection region would be up here when we're talking about the parameter being greater than the value. We can have kind of the opposite of that and have that the parameter is less than the value. If that's the case, then we would be still working with a one-sided test, but this side we would be one-sided to the left, and so our rejection region this time would be down here at the bottom, or the left tail. The third type of alternative hypothesis we can have is a not equal to. So not equal to is a two-sided test. In that case, we might be lower than the value, or we might be greater than the value. So we would actually split our rejection region and have some in the low tail and some in the high tail. So let's look at writing sets of hypothesis statements for particular claims. So if you watched our intro video on statistical hypothesis testing, you'll recognize these claims. Let's go ahead and now put sets of hypothesis statements to go with these. So let's say a car dealership announces that the mean time for an oil change is less than 15 minutes. So we're gonna set up a pair of hypothesis statements. We're gonna have our null hypothesis and our alternative hypothesis. In this case, the parameter that we're talking about is a mean. So I'm gonna use the symbol mu for both of them. My null hypothesis always has to be a statement of equality. So we're gonna say mu is equal to 15. Then the claim here is that the mean time is less than 15 minutes. So that's gonna go in our alternative hypothesis. So we're gonna say we're testing the claim that mu is less than 15. All right, let's check out the next one. Let's say a company advertises that the mean life for its furnace is more than 18 years. So again, we're gonna go ahead and write a set of alternative hypotheses. H sub zero is our null hypothesis, always a statement of equality. And H sub A is our alter alternative hypothesis, usually to do with our claim. So here again, we're working with a mean, so I'm gonna have mu as my parameter in both statements. I know that my null hypothesis has to be an equality statement, so I'm gonna have mu equals 18 years. 
And the claim that the company is making is that its furnaces last more than 18 years. So in this case, this would be greater than 18. And finally, our third, a college publicizes that the proportion of its students who are involved in at least one extracurricular activity is 61%. So writing a null and alternative hypothesis pair, here we're talking about a population proportion. So our parameter here would be P, and for P, in our null hypothesis, we always have to have an equality statement. So P equals 0.61 or 61%. And here the claim is that it's equal to 0.61. So in this case, our null hypothesis is actually our claim. So an alternative hypothesis is just whatever is the opposite. So we would say our alternative hypothesis is that the proportion of students involved in at least one extracurricular curricular activity is different than 0.61. So in all three of these, we have a statement of equality in our null hypothesis, and then a statement of difference in some way as our alternative hypothesis. Now what do we do with those hypothesis statements? Well, once we have those, we are going to run our hypothesis test and we're going to make a decision based upon the outcome of that test. But it's important to know that you will always begin a hypothesis test by assuming that the null hypothesis is true. So the distribution that you're going to be working with is one that assumes your null hypothesis is true. So that means when you make a decision, your decision is always based upon your null hypothesis. You can either reject the null hypothesis and say that there's not enough evidence to support that the null hypothesis is true, or you can fail to reject. You can say there is not sufficient evidence to reject the null hypothesis. But it's important to note here that failing to reject the null hypothesis is not the same thing as accepting the null hypothesis. Remember, in statistics, we always want to err on the safe side. So we don't ever want to accept a hypothesis statement. We either reject it if there's enough evidence to reject, or we fail to reject. We just claim that, hey, there's not enough evidence to reject this statement. Okay, now that we've written hypothesis statements, stay tuned for our next video on how to create rejection regions. Until then, catch you next time.